Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you the entire installation process for the recently released Ubuntu 23.10. I'm going to show you the entire installation process every step of the way, and by the end of the video, you'll have an Ubuntu installation of your very own. In addition, there's some changes within the installer this time around, so during the process, I'll show you what's different. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's dive into the Ubuntu 23.10 installer and see the full installation process. And here we are at the Ubuntu 2310 desktop, and we're using Ubuntu 2310 in live mode. And because we're using it in live mode, that means we can test it before we install it. Just keep in mind that performance might be slower in live mode than it would be after you install it. But this is a good opportunity to make sure that your hardware is working, so why not test a few things and be sure that Ubuntu is compatible with your computer before you install it. The first thing that I recommend doing is make sure that you have a connection to the internet. Now here I have a networking icon, and that tells me that I'm connected via a wired interface. I'm using my Thelio desktop, so that makes sense. You might also see a Wi-Fi icon here if you don't have wired networking. Either way, you could click anywhere within this area to open the system control menu. And if you need to connect to Wi-Fi, then the option for doing that is right here. We could click on the arrow next to Wi-Fi. If we click right here, it turns Wi-Fi on and off, but this arrow will bring up a list of wireless networks. And if yours is listed, we can connect to it. And that'll enable you to make sure that you can connect to the internet. And that's definitely something you wanna make sure of before you install it. After you have a connection, what you could do is open up the default web browser, which is Firefox. And then you can go to any website to test out the connection. I recommend going to YouTube or even the website for this particular channel just to make sure you can watch videos and hear them as well. We want to make sure that everything is working. You could plug in an external monitor if you want to use more than one. Any other components such as microphones, speakers, printers, scanners, whatever you have, you can make sure that they work by plugging them into your computer. And then once you're sure everything is compatible, we could close anything that we have open. And right here we have the installer for Ubuntu 23.10. And if you are ready to go, then I'm ready to go, so let's get it installed. Now this installer right here, as I mentioned, is a brand new installer. There's going to be quite a few things here that are similar to the old one, but this one in particular has been rewritten in Flutter, so this might be the first time you're seeing this new installer. This installer was in the previous release, but it wasn't enabled by default, but now in 23.10, it actually is enabled by default. Anyway, the first screen will enable us to choose our language. Mine defaulted to English. And you can scroll through here and choose a different language if your primary language is something other than whatever comes up by default for you. In my case though, I'm going to leave it on English. And we can see that English is highlighted, it's in orange. And I kind of wish there was a bigger highlight here, but that's just something they could fix with the new installer. Either way, the selection is going to have orange text as you see here. So we'll click next to confirm our language selection. And now we have an option to install Ubuntu or to try it. Now, technically, we've already been trying out Ubuntu. We just opened up Firefox, for example. But if you click Try Ubuntu, that's going to close the installer and let you use it in live mode, which is fine. But what we want to do is install Ubuntu. So that's why I'm going to click on this option here. Now, at this screen, we already chose our language earlier, but this right here is for selecting our keyboard layout. So if yours is something other than English, you can select that here. And you could also click within this box to test the keyboard if you want to make sure that it's working. And that's especially important if you change the layout. You want to make sure that your modifier keys are working properly. And this gives you an opportunity to test that. Once you've made your selection, go ahead and click Next. And the next screen here is asking us how we want to connect to the internet or our network. And by default, it's using the wired network. That's what I have plugged in. But you could also connect to a Wi Fi network if you wanted to do that. I'm going to leave it here on wired, it's faster anyway, and then I'll click next. Now here what we have is an update available for the installer. And that's pretty cool because if the Ubuntu developers realize that something is going wrong with the installer, they can give you an option to update to that new installer by clicking this button if a new version is available. 
And it's possible by the time you get to install Ubuntu 23.10, they might even have a newer version than what I have right here. Either way, what I do recommend that you do is update whenever you do have that option, because that'll make sure if there's any bugs or anything like that, that they might've been fixed. So I recommend updating it if you see this. So that's what I'll do. I'll click right here to update the installer. How cool is that? It's downloading the new installer. And what I'll do is just restart the installer since we have the new version now. And just like before, we have our language selection. I'm just going to go through these screens again. Since we restarted the installer, it's asking us these questions all over again. I would have preferred the installer would have gave us the option to update at the beginning, but you know what? It is what it is. So I'll just click next here and then next here again and then next. And now we are further along in the installer. It's asking us which type of installation we would like to start with. Now, this is something that's different with Ubuntu 23.10 when compared to previous versions of Ubuntu. Previously, if you chose the default installation, you would get all the utilities and tools that you might need, things like LibreOffice, Firefox, and what have you. And that's how it's always been, but it's a little bit different now. The default installation doesn't include any of the things that I mentioned. So you could think of the default installation as a minimal installation, just installs what's necessary, a web browser, basic utilities, just like it says. Now for most of you, I'm going to recommend the expanded installation, and that's going to give you an office suite and some additional utilities. It also gives you games, which you know you may or may not want, but I'll leave that up to you. Either option here is more than fine. You just have more to install after the fact if you choose the default installation, but again, it's up to your preference. Now this option right here, installed third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, I recommend that everybody checks this box. You may or may not have hardware on your system that needs a special driver, but quite a few of you will. And if you don't choose this box, it's possible that something might not work correctly. If you know what you're doing and you know how to install drivers and things like that, you could uncheck this box or leave it unchecked and then go ahead and install whatever you need. But for most people, I recommend they check this box. It just makes things a bit easier. Now this box right here, I recommend that everyone checks this as well. This is going to download and install support for additional media formats, just like the verbiage says right here. And you may or may not have media downloaded that would even need this. But the thing is, these two checkboxes, they don't take up much space when it comes to the extra packages that they end up installing. So I really don't feel like there's any reason not to check these. And even if you don't have a reason to have additional media formats on your computer, maybe you don't really intend on watching offline media, but you never know. If somebody sends you a video, you might actually need this. So I recommend that everybody chooses both of these options just to be safe. And then once you've made your selections here, you could go ahead and click next. Now currently I have Debian 12 installed on this computer. This is my recording PC, so the distribution that I have installed on this computer changes pretty much every week. But what I'm going to do is erase the disk and install Ubuntu. And like it says, what that's going to do is, well, erase the disk. So I hope that you've backed up everything you want to keep, because if you choose this option, you will not be able to get anything back that's, you know, saved on your hard drive. You know, think of saved games or any files that you might have downloaded. Make sure you grab everything before you go past this point. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. If you have another operating system on your computer, you can select this option here to do a dual boot. That's what that gives you. But this tutorial is to install Ubuntu as the only operating system. So that's what I'm going to do. We also have an advanced features box right here. And if we click on that, we have some additional options for how we might want our installation set up. We also have an experimental option here for ZFS, which was missing in a previous release. It was in previous releases before that. This was recently reintroduced, as I understand it, into the new installer. However, what I'm going to do is just leave it at none, but you could choose these options here if you'd like. Now, experimental ZFS support, I'll leave that up to you. I might cover that in a different video. LVM is usually a good option. I do recommend that for most. I'm just going to choose none to keep it simple, but LVM is something that you can benefit from. But if you don't know about LVM, 
then, well, I have a video that covers it, if you're interested. It's an old video, but everything is still current. I'll leave a card for that video right about here if you want to check that out. But again, I'm going to leave that on None, and then I'll click OK. So now that we've chosen our type of installation, let's click Next. And right here is just giving us a summary of what's going to happen. I have a one terabyte NVMe SSD in this computer right now. So that's what it's detected. That's what I chose to wipe and erase. So I can go ahead and continue. Now, if you have a, another drive in your computer and the one that's selected is not the one that you want to install Ubuntu onto, you could always drop down this box right here and choose something else. Now, I don't want to choose this option here because this is the flash drive that I booted from to get to this point. So that's not gonna work very well if I wipe the very thing that I'm using to install Ubuntu with. And this hard drive right here is the only one that I have anyway. So I'm just going to leave that alone. And it's the right selection for me. So I'll click next. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now it's summarizing which drive is going to be used, what the partition layout is going to look like. If this looks good to you, or if you don't have a preference anyway, just click install. Now it's installing in the background, but this screen right here is going to help us choose the time zone. The simplest way to do it is to simply click on the map wherever you are located. And that should choose your location here and your time zone, which is why you're doing this. It's setting the time zone and location. You could always type your location up here to narrow it down, but I have the correct selection on my end. I don't currently live in Detroit, but that's close enough. So I'll click next. Next, we could type in our name, our first and last name, which is what I'll do right here. And for the username, that's the name that you'll log in with. I like to simplify that down to the first name. It's just a personal preference. Next, what we'll do is type in the password that we want our user account to have. And then we'll type it again. And we should be good to go there. Now, I'm not going to cover Active Directory in this video, but if you need that kind of thing, I want to make sure that you are aware of the fact that you can use Active Directory with Ubuntu 23.10. If that's something that you want to go ahead and utilize, I might make a video about that in the future. Not quite sure yet. Let me know if that's something that you want to see. But also I want to point your attention to this option where we choose whether or not we want a password to sign into the system. And you might be thinking, why wouldn't I want a password? Well, if you're setting up a kiosk, for example, you might want that to automatically log in. If that's the case, you can uncheck this box here which means the user account that we have set right here is going to automatically be logged into the system anytime it boots up. I'm going to make sure this is enabled because it's a good idea to be asked for a password when you log into the machine for security purposes, obviously. So we'll click next. And at this point, it's asking us whether we want the light theme, which is the one we have right now, or perhaps we want to use the dark theme. To show you the difference, I'll open up the file manager. And here we have the file manager. Now when I set it to dark mode, watch how it changes. As you can see, the wallpaper changed, the icons changed, and the theme changed. I'll leave it up to you which one you want to go along with, but I'll just choose the default right here. Now you could also choose the accent color. Personally, I like green, but you could choose whatever you'd like for the accent color. And it's going to make some subtle changes all over the desktop but I'll just leave this on the default here. And now Ubuntu 23.10 is installing. Now, if you're curious to see more information about the installation, you could click on this icon right here to view terminal output. And that's pretty cool. You could actually watch what it's doing in the background if that's something that you wanted to see. But if you don't care about the details, we could just leave that alone. 
you get some information here about some features that Ubuntu contains. But what I'm going to do is just let this run and then I'll be right back. And just like it shows right here, the installation is complete. So what we should do at this point is restart our computer into the new installation, which is what I'm going to do right now. And once the system reboots, we'll be able to log in to our brand new Ubuntu 2310 installation. So I'll restart it and then I'll be right back. And check it out. Everything appears to be successful. We have a freshly installed Ubuntu 2310 right here. And the first time you log in, it's going to give you an option to connect your online accounts, just like it says. So if you have a Google account, Microsoft account, Nextcloud account, or what have you, you can go ahead and click on one of these and authenticate to one of these services to have some integration with your desktop. One of the things that this might do for you is set up calendar notifications or email notifications and things like that. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can choose one of these here. And just like it says here, you can always go into settings and add something if you don't want to do it right now. Now, if you want to help improve Ubuntu, you can go ahead and send some information to Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu, if that's something that you want to do to help out. There isn't anything personally identifiable within that information. It shows right here that what they're interested in is things like computer model, what software you have installed and things like that is totally optional. If you're curious what the report might contain, we can click on show the first report right here to find out. So you can look through the information that's going to be sent to Canonical. And if you're okay with this information being sent to them, you could go ahead and, well, leave it at the default and send some information to Canonical. That's what I'm going to do because I haven't sent them any information since the previous release and I should probably help the project out. So I'll leave it right here and then I'll click next. Location services are disabled by default. So what we could do is enable this if we plan on using map apps or anything like that. But you can go ahead and enable this in settings if you want to do that later. But anyway, let's click next. And then we'll click done. Anyway, now that we have a full installation of Ubuntu 2310 on our system, I hope you enjoy it. And there's our video. I hope you enjoy your brand new installation of Ubuntu 2310. And if this video helped you out, then please click that like button to let YouTube know how helpful this video was. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.